Um, we're going to go ahead and take it apart a little bit so we know what it looks like on the inside. You can tell it goes right into there. So we're going to take this thing apart and going to go ahead and see if there anything else could be wrong, like bad capacitors. Uh, I mean, there's nothing ex um, physically wrong from the outside, but maybe it could be on the last of something. So I'm going to have my uh, bag here, get my screwdrivers out. I believe it uses flathead screws. Alright, I need something soft to set this on. Um. Alrighty, people. Got it on the mat. Let's go ahead and begin taking this thing apart. So we got one big screw back here. It took some uh, a brute force, but I finally was able to get the keyboard open. Um, note to self, when taking apart keyboards, uh, especially the IBM ones, their retaining clips are very thick. So don't be afraid to put your back into it when you try to open it because um, don't be fragile with it. I had to really put my back into opening this thing. Um, but I did eventually get it to open and it's certainly not pretty on the inside, dust dirt wise. So I'm going to go ahead and bring the camera in and show you guys what I mean right now. If you guys are eating while you watch this video, note to be kind, um, note, just note you're going to be seeing some pretty disgusting crap. Um, so here's the back panel for the Model M keyboard. Uh, or not actually opening up, I realize this is not a Model M, but it is an IBM keyboard. Let me just position this thing back on the mat I had it set on. I'm glad I decided to take this thing apart to look inside because it is pretty nasty. At least to me it is. Yuck, that is gross. I don't even want to know what some of the species are in this thing. Alright, so anyway, we got the keyboard. Uh, here it is, it's IBM Model F keyboard. Um, here's the part number. Uh, 1503 O nine two DF one three three four. I don't know what EC means. Shop date fifty one oh nine. Card to base signature close signature. So these oh wow these are the inspection. These are the people who inspected the machine or the keyboard before uh, putting it in. That's pretty cool. Um, it'd be nice if it had a manufacturing date, but I don't know where that would be. I do have the serial number, but I don't know how that would help. But anyway, here we are. We have the keyboard. Um, it's very clean, uh, at least at the top, but at the bottom, things start to get a little gross. So we got this weird thing right here. Got not a clue what that is. And this is one that's gross because I can tell that's an organism, or at least once was an organism. Uh, I got no idea what that was or once was, but that was definitely something, and it was hooked up on the side of that foam. And then, I don't know what is that, but that's disgusting. Um, uh, some more dirt around here. I might need to take off the front panel. I don't know what horrors lie behind this panel. I'm kind of afraid to find out. Um, but, yeah, there's some more crap. Uh, it's not bugs, but, eh. And that is it. That's what lies behind this old uh, Rockety keyboard. Um, here are the controller boards, and there's the feet that come out. Um, yeah. Thankfully, it looks to me like everything I can pop out with a connector. I need to be super careful, though, because uh, this is the only Model M I found and have, and that is currently working. So I need to be careful when taking this thing apart, as I do not want to break it any more than I have to. But, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and look research more about the IBM Model F real quick, and I'll be right back in a moment. 
All right, back. Um, so this is an IBM Model F keyboard. Um, this, it's the name right here according to Wikipedia, Model FAT, which is the one I have, was released in 1983 with the IBM Model, or IBM PC 5170, uses an AT connector. Um, and that's a picture of the keyboard. That does look a lot like the one I'm working on. Um, that's the XT version. So I have the second version of this keyboard and it is original. These say to be more tactile and clicky than the IBM Model M's. I kind of beg to differ because my Unicop Model M is very clicky and noisy than, noisier than this, but it does feel better to type on this than the Model M I have. Um, but yeah, um, I'm gonna get the vacuum cleaner in here for a moment after I remove the power connector from the keyboard and I'll take a look at whatever else is in here eventually I want to get to this uh, metal plate and figure out what's underneath and this is part one of the IBM um, AT uh, PC AT keyboard restoration um, so we're gonna go ahead and begin by taking the keyboard apart here very shortly I'm gonna go ahead and begin taking off the control panels I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the ground terminal right over there it's on a screw can't see it at the angle it's right over the ribbon cable so you guys can get to see me remove the uh, ground connection so it's right here all right got that out screw fell out from the bottom it's all right oh yeah everything's slowly coming apart here um, I'd say it'll take a little bit of while, but I'm gonna ahead and stop the video, kind of get more things out, and I'll come back to you guys in a moment. All right, people, things were going very well um, with the uh, cable removal here, and um, getting that wire out. Finally, got that out until I realized something I noticed, and I noticed it when I was looking at this and that right here, and um, if these kind of bugs are attracted to this foam. I'm wondering why. So I kind of just took my my uh, screwdriver and kind of brushed against the foam and realized it came apart. Yes, yeah, so the foam is currently brittle, which is not a good thing. I'm going to go ahead and just take the scalpel here so I can get some off. See? Um, now that's an issue, of course. Don't know why. Well, obviously, I do know why um, the foam is going bad, and that's not a good thing. So I need to figure out if it's possible to buy new of this, new uh, whatever this foam is stuff, this foamy stuff. Yeah, this stuff's really coming apart. So yeah, I got to research on the internet if it's possible to buy new foam. Uh, possibly, I don't know. I've never taken apart an IBM keyboard and uh, expected anything wrong. I knew this thing would have issues because it's very old. It's like 30 years old. I knew it would have some issues. So, yeah, we're going to get this thing in a restored order pretty soon, but not for a while. As the parts will be very expensive to buy, uh, possibly. So I'm going to go ahead and continue looking around on the Internet. Alrighty, people, I just vacuumed out all of the uh, disgusting grime that was on the corner of that edge there. So we'll see what lies underneath when I pull the rest of the thing apart. Alrighty, people, I now got the LED uh, board out for the num lock, scroll lock, and caps lock uh, lights. And um, uses a Texas Instruments chip uh, to drive them, I guess. And there's the cable that interfaces with the uh, main board right here. Um, that's the connector to that, and yeah. And I've noticed there's something right here that says E.T. written on it. I don't know what that means. I don't know if it re refers to the movie E.T., like extraterrestrial. I don't know, but it's kind of interesting that it's there. Uh, it's a pretty basic board. It's just double-sided. Most of it's through-hole components. All of it, actually, is through-hole components, um, including the LEDs. And they also do circuit tracing as well. So, kind of interesting. So, yeah. I got this board out as well. Um, I'm all gonna, uh, it looks like it is connected directly to the main board. So, I'm going to unscrew the uh, back plate now and see if I can get to that. Alright, people. I just got the keyboard out of the housing. Here it is. Holding it in my hand. 
Uh, the controller board seems to be permanently attached, or not really, but is screwed in permanently to the keyboard. Well, not permanently, but there's a mount for it on this keyboard, and it seems to want to take that forever. So, yeah. I also noticed that this wide connector uh, angle thing, uh, i got to be careful when rehooking this back up because that's a whole connector, and um, I only have, like, little cables like that. So anyway, I gotta remember to hook this back up right. Definitely that foam is rotting away. Um, I got some of that foam on my sock. Fingers getting it. It's, it's, this foam is really bad. I, I don't know how to replace it if I can. But, yeah. And I noticed that there's a PCB, a curved PCB behind this board. Um, interesting. So that must be the contacts for the uh, um, springs. So yeah. Alrighty people, I'm gonna go ahead and begin uh, individually cleaning out this whole keyboard. I got my Hurricane here. I'm gonna get it out actually real quick, hold on. Alrighty people, so far I'm taking off the function keys and I'm cleaning them with uh, al isopropyl alcohol on cotton, on cotton balls. Uh, a wet one and a dry one. Here are the keys that are still dirty. And here are the clean ones on the keyboard. I also cleaned the back plate here, uh, sort of. Didn't get all that grime off, but it's good enough to get that dust away. Alrighty, I got all the function keys. They should all be variably clean. Much better looking than they were. Compared to these dirty keys, there is kind of a difference. So now I'm going to get started on this middle row here. Alright, uh, I'm trying my best not to damage that board though. I need to be careful with that because that's the controller board for this thing and there's some uh, certain things on it that I've never seen before that you wouldn't expect to see on a controller board like um, clock crystals and stuff like that. It's uh, got to be very careful with this stuff. So I'm going to get started with the main keys now. So far so good. Look at all this grime, seriously. You can see all that dirt in between the spaces of the um, um, hole for the uh, key switch. I got all the main keys off, now I just gotta put off, pull off these uh, uh, keys with the uh, metal bars on them. Alright, I got all the keys off except for the space bar. I'm gonna clean around that because that's not coming out very easily. I noticed look, looking down you can see a PCB board with some traces on them. So I guess that's how the metal springs get contact on this board right here. Instead of it being a membrane, it's actually a PCB. Um, that explains also why it can be heavy. And this part right here, that's all metal. It's very cold also. So I'm going to get and begin uh, cleaning out in the spaces between, then I'm going to start getting the keys. Alright people, here I am about 30 minutes later. Here's my progress on uh, cleaning up the keys. As you can see, I already got all of the uh, basic, your basic uh, backspace, caps lock, shift and enter keys and whatever's, tab control, alts. Got those all back on. Uh, cleaned them up and here are the uh, your basic keys. Almost finished filling out Querity. Um, very wider, much wider compared to the Z key here. I'll just put the Z key right here for as, a, as an example. As you can see that is quite a bit better than the Z key is. So it's getting there. Definitely getting there. This restoration is doing pretty good though. Hello guys, I'm back yet again and um, um, about maybe 15 minutes later I got more of the keys on. I got the Querity UIOP. Got on that. I got the ASDF GH a JKL semicolon. Got all those on. And now I just got the last row to do uh, Z, X, C, V, B, N, M. So that is that. Yeah. Alrighty, people. I just finished on the whole keys. I'm nice and clean now. For function F1, F through 10. And yeah, all the keys are nice and shiny. Now I just got to work on the numpad. Alrighty people, I already um, cleaned up the escape, numlock, scroll lock, slash, break, system request key, as well as the print screen asterisk, minus, plus, delete, period, and insert zero. I've cleaned all those keys up, and i still got the numbers to go. So, yeah. Alrighty people, I just finished cleaning up all the keys. Now, I just need to clean up those face plates now, and the back plate. 
Before I do though, I'm just gonna go over and clean this up just one more time, just kind of wipe it across, and then just dry it up. So basically, yeah, just to make sure I got everything. All right, so yep. Alrighty, people. Um, this is yes, yeah, been a lot of time went by, um, but I got the front panel cleaned up. I'll show you the front in a moment. I also got um, the keyboard mechanism screwed back in, uh, the controller boards and the um, LED driver board. All those are hooked back up, and um, yeah. Uh, I got all those stuff hooked back up, and I'm going to be cleaning the back panel here in a moment. I noticed how really brown all this stuff was. Uh, I guess combination of the person being using it, and perhaps maybe it's been in the thrift shop, perhaps maybe for a while. But the reason why I think it may have not been for a while was, was at the top of the. It was pretty close to the top of the pile. I just had to move one keyboard out of the way to get this thing out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys the front right now. So you guys can see how clean it is now. This is upside down, but it's looking pretty well. Very close to beige. Or not beige, it's actually completely white. Um, I got rid of um, that random, uh, what you call it? Um, that random uh, gooey part right here that was once there. And I added, I got rid of the uh, price tag. Shined up the... Uh, personal computer ATIBM emblem and I cleaned up that LED notification center thingy um, that's all cleaned up and all the keys are nice and bright and shiny uh, it looks very great it looks much better than what it started with I hope I have a before picture because uh, I don't so I should have taken one before starting but um, after I'm done I'm gonna quickly rub this down once the whole thing's complete with Windex because I heard that cleaning these uh, uh, Unicomp recommends with their keyboards you should clean them with Windex like for mine up there that they recommend Windex for cleaning all the keys and the stuff um, but Unicomp manufactured keyboards for IBM for a while I don't think this was manufactured by Unicomp I believe it was IBM manufactured this keyboard but then it was Lexmark then Unicomp but um, this is, I don't believe this is a Unicomp keyboard. This is an IBM manufactured, so I don't know um, what they recommend. I'm going to look around on the internet real quick to see what recommendations they have for cleaning these cases or these keyboards out other than uh, isopropyl alcohol. So, yep, I'm going to go ahead and continue cleaning, get this board back plate replaced, or I meant shined up, and then I'll meet you guys back in a moment. Alrighty, people, I just finished cleaning the back. There is some dirt on it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the Windex idea pretty soon. Um, but I noticed that the rubber feet, they do look good. They don't feel like they're falling apart or anything. But and they still have some good rubberness in them. But I noticed that on the bottom corner right here, it's completely missing. I don't know if that was supposed to be like that or what, but it doesn't. It looks like that there wasn't supposed to be one there. Um, it doesn't look like it was torn off. Um, but I assume that there was supposed to be rubber feet there as maybe that is an adhesive thing because if you look right here you can see it right here around it but you can tell I, I assume that there was to, must have been one there because there's one right here as well so uh, I don't know quite honestly I really don't so I'm gonna um, so now I just need to do replace two things the um, uh, the uh, the cable and the rubber feet at the bottom here. I'm gonna go ahead and bring out the Windex and begin cleaning. Before I do that I'm just gonna research real quickly about some parts I need. I already got the cable narrowed down. Uh, Unicomp sells replacement cables. I don't know if they do for this keyboard but I believe you just need to give them the part number for this thing and um, they will go ahead and make you one I believe. So we'll see. Check back with you guys in a moment about that but for now I'm gonna go ahead and research uh, the rubber feet thing. Alrighty people, I found a website on a eBay, or not a website, but I found a place where I can get some rubber feet on eBay. Some 3M tapered, um, taped, -ered, tapered, I don't know, square black rubber feet, 0.4 inches uh, by 0.12 inches, uh, bump on pad, adhesive. Um, it's $2.51 plus $2.25 shipping. That's comes to about four dollars and seventy six cents I believe yeah about that it's four dollars and seventy six cents which is pretty good uh, for this bill uh, for this repair so yeah so I already got the rubber feet I need to replace and they are black as well and I think it's a eight pack I think that's what it's trying to show us um, 
Let me see if that is what it means. Whoops, I just... Whoa. See if that really is an 8-pack. Yep. Quantity selling, 8 bump-on feet per price. Which is not too bad, and then it's a 3M brand. According, at least that's what it claims to be. And that's what it says on the back. Bump on, 3M bump ons. All right, so I already got the cover keep that rubber feet covered. I still don't know yet about the uh, power cable right here or the data uh, or the um, um, the connector cable right there. Um, but I do know, yeah, like I said, PC uh, um, keyboards.com or Unicomp's website say they sell replacement attached cables. I don't know if they sell it for the um, Model F keyboards though. So we'll see how about that goes. If they don't, I'm going to have to figure out how to fix it. I might need to use a heat shrink. And uh, as for the back of this thing, I tried using Windex to clean it off. And it pretty much doesn't look any different than when I started cleaning it off with Windex. Uh, it did get some of that dirt off, but not a lot. So, yeah. Alright, guys. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, put this back 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 on the back of the keyboard and I'll show you guys the whole thing and I'll show you guys it working so and that'll be the end for uh, part one of the restoration process alright people so here's the Model F keyboard now I'm about ready to power up this computer right here um, right now the keyboard is really nice and clean As you can see all the buttons are nice and uh, tidy white they're not dirty anymore yeah anyway we're going to go ahead and power up the computer and I'll show you guys the keyboard working. Um, um, uh, this, this, um, I, as you can see right here, I took some less stress off that power, of, off the data cable because um, with it just hanging down it could just come out right out because the only thing I think is now holding that into place is it's the actual wires going into the uh, computer or the into the uh, keyboard. So yeah, um, the back panel isn't screwed on, I just kind of put it on top of the keyboard because I'm not screwing it on until I get the uh, the new uh, cable because it's going to look a little bit better with the new cable it's gonna be less messy with the new cable I meant so yeah so um, let's go ahead and power up this uh, computer here yep the uh, numlock light came on I believe the scroll light long light should not come on yep and the caps light lock should come on. Yep, and the num lock turns right on and off. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and power on my uh, TV, and then you guys will should be able to see that work. All right, as you can see, it telling me that caps lock is on, and that is the case. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my password. And there we go, we are logged in. So I'm gonna go ahead and write into the terminal. Unfortunately, since um, there is no F11 key, I can't go into the terminal from the keyboard. The, that wasn't work, so I'm gonna type in every key on the first row. That looks working. All right, let me try ASW, ASDFs. Yep, all right, now we'll try the last row. Yep. All right, so all those work. Now I got to test. So the enter key you just saw also works. So now for um, asterisk, number lock, and whatever. So let me just clear the screen. All right, so now we're going to try number, asterisk, and tilde, whatever. Yep, those all registered. All right, now for the number uh, numpad. All right, that works too. So now I'm turning the num lock off. Let's see if up and down arrow keys work. Okay, page up, down, interesting page down, tildes, end, home, end, home, page up, page down. That's delete. Alright, so yeah, it's working pretty much, um, which is great. Um, as for tab, try and tab, 
we'll probably be able to see in the terminal, but the keyboard computer is recognizing it. Shift, that works. Shift on the other side, that works too. Whoop, let me. Yep, that works too. Um, so, spacebar. Yep, that works as well. So, everything on this thing is working, which is great. Um, and I guess that will conclude uh, uh, part one of the restoration of this keyboard. Um, you, um, part two will uh, can be not concluding, I, be I believe, but it'll be um, assembling all the new parts together, like the new cable, um, which isn't a problem really. It's just a matter of screwing in the new ground terminal and uh, hooking up the new connector. Hopefully they will have a cable like that. I hope I'll be able to uh, get one somehow. So we will see how that will turn out. And, and if this doesn't work, then I'll just go for the uh, do-it-yourself fix. Also, we'll be buying new rubber feet. And yeah, so people, thank you for watching this video. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Hopefully, it'll be discussing part two of this project. Um, and yeah, and possibly beginning on the refrigeration repair project, too for my film. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Leave a comment below if you have one. And yep, be sure to subscribe if you'd like. And uh, yep, like and dislike and whatever. See you guys later.